Hi everybody. Um, my name is Melanie Colasa. Um, I'm an activist. Uh, I also founded a group called Community Control of Land Use uh, after I ran for city council last year. Um, I saw a need to organize this group really because there was so much displacement all over the city with tenants and small businesses. Uh, I myself am a small business owner with my husband, Peter Ciceri. Uh, we have a small coffee shop um, on Ninth Avenue. It's called Red Eye Coffee. It's the best best coffee on the planet. Uh, it, it actually really is. Uh, but, I, but this issue of the Small Business Job Survival Act, um, now it's become very personal to me because we're actually being right down by our landlord that we're also um, on the verge of being evicted. So, so here I am, I, I ran for city council. Uh, this issue was, I really pushed this walk in the Job Survival Act. I thought it was very important. Um, it's a uh, severe imbalance between landlords um, and small businesses during the lease renewal process. Um, when the lease ends, the landlord jacks up the rent and then the small businesses can't pay it. But also, it's become personal now because this is actually happening to us, uh, which we're very frustrated about. Um, but anyways, I wanted to thank everybody for being here. Um, I also like to thank Noreen from the Ocasio campaign. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Alexandria for supporting the Small Business Job Survival Act. It's awesome. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to, I wanted to call this press conference because I thought that another narrative um, wasn't getting out there. And basically, uh, we all know that the big real estate industry is running roughshod of our neighborhoods, upzoning, displacing tenants and small businesses. Um, but there's another narrative, um, which is I think also city council is also very culpable and also complicit in this. So whenever I hang out with a lot of the activist groups, this was the narrative that all the anti-gentrification groups and groups have been talking about, but then nobody was able to get this out. So this is why I decided to call this press conference. Um, and it's an important narrative because I think it's the truth. Um, I also hear that people are very worried that the bill is going to be watered down to worthlessness. Um, and also, people are starting to not have faith in city council as an institution to give the public and That's what I think is really, really very important. Um, why, are, why are people worried? Number one, 30 years of inaction. We've had three decades of a small business crisis. Uh, the council has been sitting on this bill for three decades. Now the crisis is even worse. Uh, every month, 1,200 businesses close with 8,000 jobs lost for New Yorkers. So that translates in one year. 15,000 businesses and almost 100,000 jobs are lost every year. Um, so that's a tremendous loss to our economy. Um, and yes, we are grateful to Corey Johnson for the public hearing. Yes, this is the first time in nine years. We're grateful, but what really needs to happen is that the bill needs to pass and it needs to be passed and tapped. Um, also what I hear, people are worried because they think the public hearing is going to be political theater. Um, that it's just an exercise, another feel-good procedural tactic that City Council uses um, to give us false hope. And City Council honestly has a record of betrayal. Just recently, Dennis Rodriguez who introduced this bill, just voted to upzone all of Inwood, Carlina Rivera voted for the Tech Hub, uh, promised that she wasn't going to vote for it, she voted for it. Um, Jimmy Van Bramer um, refused to oppose the BQX, which will bring even more displacement and gentrification to Brooklyn and Queens. The third thing, real estate money and city council. It's it's not a secret. Everybody talks about it. But um, I think I need to put more, uh, more of a spotlight on it. Um, just look at our speaker, Corey Johnson. I ran against Corey last year, um, and I examined his campaign contributions in September of 2017. I looked up 168 of his donors, and my calculation showed that out of $485,000, 335,000 from real estate, Wall Street, with a little bit of nightlife and corporate philanthropy. So that's a huge number. So it makes you think, who is he really working for? Uh, but all this is doing something incredible. All this, can I say corruption, is doing something very incredible. It's collectively organizing and unifying numerous anti gentrification groups. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Lynn Ellsworth, right here. Right here. She organized a historic rally of 65 anti-gentrification groups last Saturday. Completely historic, it was wonderful thing. Um, so what you see now is groups are really bonding together because this issue is really a crisis. 
prices for tenants, prices for small businesses. Um, and also, I think the rally brought out very interesting solutions, uh, like revising the city charter and calling for a recall of council members who are not responsive to their community. Here, here. That's something that I never heard about. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 Recall. recall. So, um, I mean, I think those are the sorts of things that people are now thinking about. Uh, thinking about what kinds of policies that can ensure that our council members really work for us. Uh, also, I recently had a conversation with a former city official for about 40 minutes on the phone. And the one thing he kept on impressing is that city council only responds to pressure. So, being nice to them and uh, forming civil relationships with them doesn't work. And that's something that really, really was impressed upon me. And we have to pressure them. And I guess the lesson for this day is to never let up, keep calling them out, and not let them hide behind the narrative that the real estate lobby is the real villain. I mean, the real estate lobby is a villain, but I don't expect them to work for the public. I expect our city council, council members who are elected to work for the public. Um, has the power to make monumental change, to help businesses, and give business owners like us rights in the lease renewal process, and because they haven't done so, they are complicit. If they want to redeem themselves, they should pass the bill out of committee, and then onto a full floor to vote, and then pass the bill intact. I'm done being nice. Peter, Peter. My name is Peter Ciceri, I'm Juan Nicolás' husband. Uh, I own a small business in Hell's Kitchen, a red-eye coffee shop. Been in existence for two and a half years now. Uh, we're the first specialty coffee shop in our community. And with that, uh, in our community servicing Chelsea, Hudson Yard, Clinton, uh, we've established our coffee shop to become uh, a place where people come and stay with destination. We have a great outstanding reputation and our business has become very successful. Everyone in the area knows our name. They come visit us, the office workers, the construction workers, the residents in the area, to the point that we have an 83% return rate, which is quite amazing. And with that happening, we only have 130 square foot. And I had no idea what we were going to be able to create. But our customers, they call our coffee uh, in our space. It's cozy, it's intimate, it's 130 square foot, so it can't be much less than that. Um, but unfortunately, we're at the mercy of the landlords. And what's happening is greed. Our rates are going up on a regular basis, and it's out of control. And what we're seeing, to be very clear, Red Eye is a small space. It's a micro business. We employ less than 10 people. And we're paying premium price per square foot for our space. Right now, our landlord raises the rent every time the lease comes due. Every year, the rent is going up. Because of the increases, we face the prospect of being evicted, moving out. The small coffee shop unreasonable increases, rent negatively affect my business because our profits are incremental. So it's quite challenging. I feel that we have a, the landlords they have a chokehold on us. It's either I pay a higher rate or I have to relocate to another space. Relocating to another space incurs many additional charges. Relocation fees, uh, build out costs, um, first, last month deposit, it just, everything increases. And most small businesses cannot afford to have any of the, have those changes take place. I want city council to truly understand that I have no rights as a tenant. When it comes to uh, lease renewal process, and in every, I'm very frustrated with the, with the position I'm in. It's completely unfair to give landlords total control over commercial tenants. The SBJSA would give me the right to have an affordable lease 
and the right to renew that lease, which is what I need as a small business owner. It's important to me and all the small business owners. Such financial consequences do not only affect me, my family, but my employees. And that's, small businesses have a great responsibility to our employees. And I don't know if landlords are really aware of that and the effect on moving us out and raising their rents. Our baristas, this job really matters. We care about our employees. We take care of our employees. We we're concerned about their growth. One of our employees is an LGBT homeless youth. He's been disowned by his Korean family. He's turning his life around for the better. This job really matters to him. Another one of our young baristas comes from Queens. She moved, she's working, saving her money to move out of a home that is not always very supportive of her job, working, where she comes from. Our red-eyed baristas uh, make anywhere between $28 to $36 an hour, including their credit card tips. We pay them well. We guide them care about them, they're with us for extended periods of time, my shortest employees over a year. And that says a lot for a small business with this type of a business. I cannot survive my life in addition to their lives and a negative, being negatively affected. This bill is not just a business survival issue, it's a job issue, an economic opportunity issue for the people of New York City. Don't let us down. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Howie Hawkins. Thank you. My name's Howie Hawkins. I'm the Green Party candidate for governor. I'm from Syracuse, New York. So you may wonder why do I care about the Small Business Job Survival Act? And I care because when I come to New York City, I never eat pizza in Syracuse. I only eat pizza in New York City. All right. Because small business here, I mean, there's fierce competition. We don't need landlords making it worse, and the pizza's good. You know? If I want to go to Walmart's or McDonald's or Starbucks, I can go anywhere in the country. I'm a teamster. I've been all over. Every stop is like every other stop now, except New York City. These small businesses are so important to the life of the city. They employ half the people in this city. And they're the first step for a lot of the working class immigrants. And this is a city of immigrants. And the problem we got is big real estate is parasitic upon the people and our small businesses. They will speculate and rather have empty stores so they get more money later. Doesn't matter what it does to the neighborhood or those businesses. And they don't pay taxes. They get to write all this stuff off. So you got people like Trump and Jared Kushner don't pay taxes. So wealth is concentrating. In this city, in 1980, the top 1% got 12% of all the income. Last year they got 41%. They are basically consuming the economy of the city. That's real estate in Wall Street in the 1%. It's not just capitalists exploiting labor, we're back to feudalism. The landlord's got us where he wants us, and he's exploiting us and bleeding us dry. So this Small Business Jobs Survival Act will help small businesses by making a level or playing field when we get to talking about the rent. But I hear objections. They say, oh, it's unconstitutional. You can't do it at the city level because the state regulates rents. I'll leave that to the lawyers, but I'll tell you, as somebody running for governor, and I haven't heard any other candidate say this, we got to repeal the Erstad law that has yeah, these legislators in Albany yeah. voting on your red regulations here. Yep. Why should the Republican from Wayne County, who's had no opponent in 26 years, but gets money for real estate tycoons down here to vote the right way, decide what your rent regulations are in New York City. It makes no damn sense if you're talking about democracy. So, I urge the City Council, pass this Small Business Job Survival Act. Don't water it down. Don't kick it to the state legislature. 
I'm the only candidate running for home rule on rent regulations. And all I can say is, don't let Cuomo take your vote for granted. Vote for what you want and make the politicians come to you. Hi, my name is Tom Andotti. I'm a professor emeritus of urban planning at Hunter College in the Graduate Center. I was born in New York. I've lived in New York more than half my life. And um, I've studied New York. I've written a couple of books about New York. And there's one thing very clear, that New York is different than most other cities in the United States because of its small businesses, small enterprises. We have unfortunately lost many of our small industries and producers because of real estate speculation. Because real estate has forced them out and uh, convinced the city that the best way uh, to advance is to rezone the neighborhoods from industrial to residential. Um, the, the one thing I have to say that's overlooked is how much small businesses contribute to our communities, our neighborhoods. What makes New York City so different is we have distinctive neighborhoods. Uh, we have large immigrant neighborhoods that are attractions that have um, uh, multiple small businesses that give people choice, a choice in products and a choice in, in experiences, consumer experiences. We're losing that because um, of the of real estate speculation. Now there's one myth I, I just want to uh, put on the table as being a myth, and that's this idea that we're it's all a matter of um, uh, the market deciding. That the market decides whether it's a small business or it's a chain store. There's nothing further from the truth. This is Reaganomics 101. This is supply side economics. This is not what progressive uh, uh, politicians should be mouthing, but it's the, the idea that. Uh, the market is just pushing people out because they can't afford to pay the rent. No, what's pushing people out is real estate speculation. And it's, it's real estate speculation on steroids. Last night, we got a call from a friend of ours who has a small business in Mexico City. Within one month, they were kicked out because of rising rents that they couldn't meet. This is happening all over the world. And the same investors that are producing the catastrophe in New York City are producing it in major cities all over the world. So the solution is to fight back here, to organize and to build the people who have helped us build communities. The final thing I have to say as an urban planner is we take for granted the wonderful street life in New York City. We go to most cities and suburbs around the United States, and everybody's in a car. Nobody's on the sidewalk. There's no street life. Tourists come here by the millions because they love our street life. But if you walk down every single street, every block in New York City, just over the last couple of years, you'll notice that there are at least three or four retail vacancies on every block, yes, and that's yes. in every one of the five boroughs. That's not an accident. Yep. That's not competition. Uh, uh, it's speculation by investors who have no stake in building the city and protecting our street life. Uh, and that street life is what makes our communities vibrant and we have to protect them. Thank you. So I'm Lynn Ellsworth. I'm with the Human Scale NYC, a nonprofit concerned with uh, uh, a livable city. So I want to point out that it's well established among economists, I'm one of them, that the operation of the free market frequently leads to negative, often unintended side effects. We call these social costs. And these costs are unfairly imposed on the society at large. 
a factory that dumps toxins into the air or waterways is an example of such social costs. And in these cases, it is entirely normal to impose regulations on the industries whose operations are creating these negative costs. Yes, the industries involved will whine, they will complain, they will threaten lawsuits, they always do, but they won't win. In the case of small businesses in New York City, we urgently need two things. Regulation of chain stores and regulation of lease renewals. The Small Business Job Survival Act takes on the problem of lease renewals. The current renewal process obviously creates negative social costs. The real estate industry is seizing on the undemocratic power disparity between small businesses and property owners to impose shocking, arbitrary, and extortionate rent increases. The resulting social costs are widespread, profound, impossible to fully quantify, and are known to all. The shuttering of small businesses across the city, the loss of the jobs they create, the homogenization of our city, chain stores, and very often the transformation of our streetscapes into Desolation Row. These problems have been years in the making. Given the scale and scope of these social costs, it is both the duty and the right of government to regulate the lease renewal process. We call on the City Council to pass this act without watering it down, to ignore the whining of the real estate industry, and to make haste afterwards to regulate chain stores, which are the antithesis of the kind of small-scale capitalism that our city should be encouraging. Thank you. My name is Ann McDermott. I'm a born and raised New Yorker. Three and a half years ago, a friend of mine and I started group Take Back NYC. I'm going to... Yeah. Yes. And we have been advocating for this bill ever since. Just going to read a list. Cucina de Pesce on 4th Street and 2nd Avenue. You could get uh, a, a, a salad, soup, wine, and a meal for eight, under $18 if you got there at the right time. Gone. Nail Snowball on 3rd Avenue and 84th Street. Fabulous nail salon employed maybe, maybe 100 Korean workers. Gone. Mimi's Pizza on Lexington Avenue and 84th Street. Paul McCartney's favorite pizza. The place where Bobby Flay started his career. God. Three of Cups on 5th Street and 1st Avenue. Had fabulous pizza and focaccia bread like you never forget in your life. Gone. And why are they gone? They're all gone because the landlord said we're coming in and doubling, quadrupling, tripling your rent. And these are places that made my life a better place. And since I started this group, these places are all gone. So I just wanted to put, the, put those out there. So just a word about this hearing that's going to happen today. My colleague and I have gone to many, many hearings here at City Hall. And when a, when a, a hearing is put forth, what we have seen is that the city, the government, the mayor, puts his people first. And they give their side of the argument. And you can spend hours in there, in that chamber, waiting to speak. This is not a democracy. This is an oligarchy. That's right. Yeah. The real estate yeah. industry is totally controlling this body and all the people associated with it. Uh, our deputy mayor, Alicia Glenn, just walked by. She is ruining this city. Ruining this city. Her and her economic development council have taken the neighborhoods that I know, that I love, that I grew up in, in Brooklyn, and, and all over the city, and wipe them out. Downtown Brooklyn, where I went to school, it's unrecognizable because of her and her, her actions. So in any case, the reason I'm here is just to make the point that this hearing today, we hope, we really hope that this bill can go forward. We hope that the people, us, can be heard. Not the machine, not the real estate industry. We hope that those of us who use these businesses and have seen them be wiped out the things that make our lives what they are here in New York City, that we can be heard for the first time ever. Because it's in, in my years of working here and, and going to these hearings, they do not listen to us. So let me just say one last thing. There are 36 council seats 
up for re-election in 2021. Yeah. And I'm going to talk with Miss Lynn Ellsworth over here in the rally that we had on these very steps where we had over 300 people come yes. and over 60 groups. And we are organizing and we are going to get new candidates and we are going to get these people out of office. All right, I'm Jessica Burke. Some of you may have read about me in the paper headline, Landlord Pays Burke's Half a Million to Get Out of the Apartment. Well, the time has come. Angelina and I are leaving October 31st. We've been 60 years at 95 Christopher Street. I have nowhere to go, so I need a couch, but I got a lot of cash. <laughs> Let me say, as head of the business district, the Christopher Street business district, there's nothing to head to be head of anymore. Every single business is shut down. 27 businesses in the last year are closed. When I go outside with my dog, all I see are my neighbors saying that this is closed, that is closed, the French bakery is closed. My landlord, Lloyd Goldman. BLDG Management. I started a new Facebook page. Why is my landlord not in jail? This is what I need to know. His picture reclining in a chaise lounge, Lloyd Goldman. He had my 90-year-old mother removed from the apartment claiming she attacked our doorman. Fortunately, she was rescued and recovered to spend the last few years in her apartment. But. Corey Johnson needs to go. Yes, when no, he was, needs to go. repeat after me. Corey, Corey Johnson, Johnson needs, needs to go. go. I'm stunned that he's the speaker. The last time anyone returned a call was Senator Tom Dwayne. After that, it was all downhill. Every single rent control tenant has been harassed and annoyed. Corey Johnson's office has done nothing. The businesses are dried up and harassed. Corey Johnson has done nothing. It's time to get new leadership. I will support any new candidates. In fact, I may run myself. Thank you and support this bill. And Mayor de Blasio, his days are numbered. I'm Sharon Wilms, and um, I've been writing about this issue since 2013, uh, many different aspects of it. Um, as a reporter, I feel very lucky that I've been able to go to the source, to the source and um, I consider the source, the Small Business, Business Congress, Sung Soo Kim, um, wrote the original version of the Jobs Survival Act in 1986. And he's been involved in um, the seven changes to update the bill. Um, he selected seven past prime sponsors, organized and testified at 11 hearings on the bill, successfully defended the legality of the bill. So um, we, you know, they and me, we've been ad advocating for a hearing for um, all this time. And then, so now we have a hearing, and so some people are wondering why is the Small Business Congress advocating for a boycott of the hearing. So, I know we like sound bites, so I'm just going to do a press release. And if, you want, if you want full details of the history of this bill and everything else, I highly recommend going to their website, but I'll just spell out a few things that are concerning for them. So, um, one thing, we've worked salted on this, so always, when there's any aspect of this bill come up. Sung Soo Kim has been consulted, he wasn't, so. Um, yeah, Sharon, talk, talk about that, about how some groups have been completely X'd out of the process. Groups that have been in, in who have wrote the bill, have been involved in the bill for years, they've been X'd out with Corey Johnson putting in very specific people. You can talk about that if you like. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I just know from my own personal um, point of view here, when I've written these articles and I pose questions to the council members, um, legitimate questions and simple answers are required, um, not only do they not give me a no comment, they don't respond at all. And I'm just wondering what, what are they paying for, really. Um, so, I would say that one of the main factors that has concerned the Small Business Congress 
is the choice by Johnson of his chair with the Small Business Committee. Jonai, who's been heavily funded by the real estate, is an opponent of landlord regulations of any kind, even residential. Um, he's a real estate owner. He's opposed to the Job Survival Act. He's on record saying he will change it, saying the bill's illegal. And um, he's included no member from Queens, an insult to immigrant owners in Queens. And he's cut the committee in half. So, um, and also he's left in place the bogus legal roadblock remedy called create. So, um, there's great concern that uh, that will be used after the hearing to justify watering it down. And that's why um, Sung Soo Kim has called for, a, uh, for the legal issues to be resolved before the hearing. And, um, anyway, so, and that's a boycotting. So therefore, the boycott. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sandy Rayburn. I'm uh, head, of, head of, uh, down, of, uh, Preserve our wow. Preserve our <laughs> the neighborhoods. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> the city council, behind these imposing steps, has enabled big real estates in the insatiable greed. They've been complicit in wiping out the character of New York City. They've continued to bless the incestuous relationship of this mayor with the real estate board of New York. The mayor and his agencies have become developers and landlords' henchmen, coldly watching as empty storefronts with out-of-business signs plaster our neighborhood blocks. As generic national chains swoop in like, like a tsunami, taking over the mom and pops and shutting them down, our administration goes tisk tisk, but the hard-working small business owners are screwed nonetheless. Yes, as that corner bodega owner who knows just how you like your coffee gets replaced by a Starbucks, as New York City begins to look more and more like a characterless mall in Podunk, yeah. yep. tisk tisks just ain't gonna do it. So while dancing on the streets is definitely Speaker Corey Johnson's forte. Not really. He's not that great of a dancer. <laughs> and you guys, will he be as good at protecting small business owners on the streets when it comes to vote on the small jobs, small business jobs survival act bill? Does his pride also translate to defending the local corner store, the laundromat? A little deli? Let's see some courage here, some conscience, some non-negotiable defense of what helps to make New York City exceptional before it gets sold to the highest bidder. Ray Rogers, head of small business corporate campaign. I left my office after my rent was doubled. Right now, commercial tenants have no rights and they're at the mercy, completely at the mercy of unscrupulous landlords. Small business owners, their employees, and the neighborhoods need the rights and protections the Small Business Job Survival Act passed and tax will provide. Any city council member who votes against passage of the SBGSA intact, in essence, is casting a vote against New York City's immigrant population, much of which is made up of struggling small business owners and their families. Council members who vote against it or try to weaken its protections are also supporting the Real Estate Board of New York's continued hostility against our mom and pop stores and other small businesses they have targeted as irrelevant, expendable, and an impediment to maximizing profits. Why are Rebney and its president, John Bank, so terrified of the SBJSA? Why has Rebney, the Real Estate Board of New York, prevented passage of this bill for 32 years? Why is President Rebney's president, John Banks, spewing out misinformation that the SBGSA is a commercial rent control bill, which is not and never has been? Because passage of the SBGSA intact will mean the flow of billions of dollars in money from super wealthy property speculators, developers, and unscrupulous landlords represented by Rebney 
to small businesses, their employees, and the local economy. That is why passage of the Small Business Job Survival Act intact is so crucial for a much healthier New York City and the well-being of everyone living and working here. Thank you. I'm so glad the word survival is even the name of this bill, Small Business Survival Act. Because we're in a fight for survival now, whether we know it or not. <laughs> because we're standing out here and nobody's dropping bombs on us, everything seems okay. If you have high blood pressure, it's silent. Everything seems okay. There's nothing to worry about. Go out and play a round of tennis, you go out to dinner, then you drop dead. We are in such a moment. We are being warned. The UN report on climate change that came out 10 years ago is telling us wake up. We have 10 years before a tipping point where there's no reversal. We, and that. It, it, What's required, according to, I didn't make this up, don't look at me, read the report. If you've had Science 101 in college, you'll understand it. This is empirical evidence it's based on. The political actions that have to happen now have to happen, happen immediately. They have to be original. New York has to rise up to that. We are New Yorkers. We have influenced the world. For, for a hundred years, new movements, artistic movements, political movements, all kind of movements. So, I am going to join the boycott today. So let me explain why. Jane Jacobs knew more about how cities work than anybody, anywhere. That's a famous book. And in this book, there's a, there are a couple of pages about public hearings in this city council, and she makes it clear as day, these are decided before anybody goes in there and speaks. This has been decided already. Everybody, Shakespeare could go in there and speak, and it ain't gonna mean shit. <laughs> we go in there, what we're doing is playing their game. We become part of their process. It's a PR process to claim that they are democratic. If they are not, it's all done. We go out there, we bank, we use free speech, God bless America. They speak all you want, man, bullshit. It's all decided. I ain't going in there and playing that game. I'm calling for all of us to boycott. Now let me tell why the boycott is important. We have a one-party system in New York. Yeah. The Democratic Party. Yes. There is no Republican Party. I wish there was at this point. The Democratic Party is under the control of Redney. Yeah. Redney is Donald Trump's biggest supporters. They all swim around in the same fetid sewer. Yeah. Yeah. Redney has the city council in his back pocket. Corey Johnson, what has he done in the four years he's been in there? Has he said one word about the businesses dying every day, about gentrification going on? Not a word. Suddenly he found religion. The political winds are blowing a little bit. Secret meetings he held. Secret meetings. So that's what I'm calling for the boycott. There is no opposition. It's a one-party system. There has to be an opposition or nothing's going to happen. The crisis that we're in politically, environmentally, and every other way has to be addressed dramatically and immediately. There has to be an opposition. Not going into that boycott. Well, not 
Fort Collins that we're hearing today is the beginning of a real opposition. I want to thank uh, Ms. Helsley for the rally that she put together on the 13th. I saw intelligent people, I saw talented people, I saw what New York is supposed to be finally emerging. People coming from all over the city. God bless her. She has my great admiration. My name is Noreen Actor. I'm director of organizing for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And to me, a lifelong New Yorker, all these stories hit way too close to home. Every day you wake up to your neighborhood mom and pop shop uh, closing and a big box chain moving in. And it is unconscionable. And I applaud all the organizers who are out here putting pressure on our city council to do the right thing, to support our small businesses, to keep New York City affordable for tenants and small business owners. And what we have shown with our campaign is that you can run without corporate money and you can win without corporate money. Our city council members need to do the same. Every single person who's out here organizing, I encourage them to run for city council, get our council out of the hands of um, corporate real estate and take the city back in the hands of New Yorkers. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Robert. I'm representing not one more block connected to anti gentrification movements across the city. Between January and April of this year, Speaker Corey Johnson met with real estate developers and their lobbyists, which included the Real Estate Board of New York, our great friends, Rudy Management, Bornetto, Brookfield, Axtel, Second Dorf Development, Terra Holdings, and RXR Realty. Many of these companies have been helped force out small businesses across the city, creating an influx of chain stores and ethnically cleansed businesses that cater specifically to the rich and the white. Now we are asking him to pass a law that will help even the playing field for small businesses that are still here in New York City. Can he resist the long arm of global capitalism? Who knows? Will he let John Banks and Brevney continue to target small businesses? Will he continue to collude with real estate developers to remix the city of New York for the 1%? Or Will he do the right thing and get the bill passed intact? Now one more block is here today to say to Speaker Johnson and the City Council pass the SBJSA intact with no backdoor deals. Yes. This yes. bill will end rent gouging by landlords and will stop illegal extortion by landlords. This will help small businesses to survive in the city that is under siege by hyper gentrification and a pay to play scheme run by our fake progressive mayor, Bill de Blasio, and the real estate developers that love him. Not one more small business, not one more luxury high rise. Pass the Small Business Job Survival Act now. Thank you. Oh. Uh, a few blocks from here where the World Trade Tower was built, my paternal grandfather had a flower shop. In the 1920s, he was born in the 1950s before I was born. So just on a few wonderful and fundamental grounds, I want small immigrant businesses to survive. Okay, so about five years ago, Robert Hawking, professor of law and public affairs at Cornell, suggested that underwater markets be saved by means of novel Thinking clause of the Fifth Amendment, better known to us as eminent domain. Perhaps a novel use of eminent domain might be investigated to reclaim our empty storefronts. This would require brave politicians, perhaps a few of them are sitting before me. I understand that at times citizens do need a strong state. In 2014, former Canadian politician Michael Gatta wrote that people who don't know that they need a sovereign with the power to compel them. Leading sources of power in society to serve the public good. They want some public authority to protect them from the systemic groups and praise of them by the powerful. Here, City Council is your mandate. Your city is losing its sovereignty to the real estate super values, losing its revenue. We claim New York. Time is running out. Creative decay of our 
life and street life has accelerated. We should pass the small incident bill and small incident and families will be safe. You guys all got what you need is? Any questions? You guys, thank you for all for coming. Thank you. Not, 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 not